Oh, I'm sorry. Arudo is asking, do you think there is a pipeline for the Wokistani Mujahideen that leads to dangerous cults like Nation, uh, Nation of Islam and Black Hebrew Israelites? Um, this is a no. complicated question um, because the flavor of like today's Wokistani Mujahideen is very different than a lot of these organizations. So these organizations predate the current flavor of Wokistani Mujahideen. And a lot of the narratives and ideologies that are utilized or kind of the cultural inheritances of these groups um, date back as far as the 1920s, if not earlier. Um, so there's quite a long history of these types of groups or groups that are um, have uh, ideologies that are, are very closely affiliated. I think um, they certainly play I think if I was in these organizations, it's a very easy tool to use, um, to use these kinds of narratives and then say, okay, but our group is the group that takes us to the next step. Um, like when we interviewed uh, San Miguel, uh, if you guys want to look at, we, we interviewed a former um, Black Hebrew Israelite on our channel. So go look up that interview here on this channel. Great interview. Miguel is such a nice guy. Um, and he talked about um, there's a lot of these narratives that these groups use are in a lot of the culture already, especially hip hop culture. Like um, Nas, the rapper Nas uses a lot of references that align with um, some of the Black Hebrew Israelite beliefs. Um, very well, a lot about being kings, about um, finding this, um, reconnecting with this stolen identity, reconnecting with an identity of, of, of power, of royalty, of grandeur that helps people give meaning and a narrative in their life, especially for people whose uh, uh, cultural heritage has been ripped from them in, through the transatlantic slave trade. So creating this narrative helps give them an overarching story to their life that kind of grapple with the meaning of, of trying to reconnect with something that they can call their own. Um, and a lot of these similar narratives are, are throughout many different forms of pop culture. Um, so if, if you're growing up and you're kind of attuned to these things, you're kind of already, you hear about these things, you're kind of familiar with these ideas already. And then you might just be um, presented to this group in a more... Uh, at, at maybe a vulnerable time in your life and then you get on board. So there's some crossover, but I don't think it's necessarily a pipeline. Yeah, my impression was not that there's a pipeline. My um, my perception was that they just defend them and provide cover for them or dismiss how bad they are. Yes, definitely that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely so yeah. there's th that, but yeah, maybe not a pipeline. Um, like the... I don't know, like the nation of Islam, they're like straight up like Nazis, like basically. And it's so amazing how the, the yeah, these Vokis like defend them, even though like this is exactly what you're supposed to be against. This is everything that you're supposed to be against. Like these people are using like, yeah, I mean, they're anti Semitic. They are using, uh, they use deeply homophobic. You know, Deeply homophobic, use ethnicity and bloodlines as a way to claim superiority. And so, like, you should be, you're leftist. You should be against all of this. The most um, racist people I have ever talked to are Black Hebrew Israelites. I have yeah. never met someone more willing to say the craziest, absolutely wild anti-Black stuff boldly straight to the faces of black people than a black Hebrew Israelite. Like mm -hmm. I have never seen men so willing to just absolutely drag black women through the mud. Mm. It, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. People want to know what they said. <laughs> like we can't, I don't think we can. I literally it. can't even say it. I, I yeah. would, I cannot say it. Um, mm. The craziest, <laughs> the most hateful things I have ever heard said against Jewish people. Like, 
absolutely insane. Um, what I and what I find really interesting is for the Black Hebrew Israelites, the only thing that matters to them is paternal lineage. So, say you're someone who's biracial, or if you go through your um, ancestral lineage, if you at any point find like a white ancestry on the paternal side, then you're dead to them. Basically, you're not the chosen people and God will eliminate you when the time comes. So that's the only thing they care about. And so I've heard them say just hateful things straight to the faces of black people just because they had like a white dad. They're like, look okay, at me, I'm so is, black as hell. <laughs> I just want to be clear though, like we're just talking about what Sunni Mujahideen, most of the left does I'm not- I'm talking about black people or Israelites. No, no, I'm talking about when people were Qasani Mujahideen defending Black Hebrew Israelites or Nation of Islam, we're not talking about the left. We have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So so we are accusing the Wokistanis of being people who make excuses for these kind of groups. Okay. But we're not the we're not accusing the left of being doing such a thing. Okay. The Wokistanis represent a fringe group within the left and the vast majority of the left is would be horrified by anything these groups represent. Okay, so I just want to be responsible because a lot of people see going after a woke, the people who are like extremely wokey, um, as a way to dismiss the entire the entirety of the left, and we should not be doing that. And maybe actually, I actually criticize myself as as well here because I keep using the word right-leaning and far-right interchangeably, okay? So I have to just be more careful about not doing that, okay? Because I also, you, a lot of the crazy, you know, I mean, I am very much anti-right-wing, so that's fine, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> but like, but I shouldn't like act like the everything that the far-right does reflects what the entire right is about, okay? Even though I am against all of the right. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.